going on out there. And the fact is, you deserve a choice in this election, and it really means it means something for tomorrow, for, for this district, this state, and our country. It's, it's so important. And I am Jody Venkatesan, and I am running for State Senate District 13. And we will, and I'm asking you tonight for, our, for your support. And, and I ask you to hire me and, so that we can represent you and to do the things in the legislature that really are meaningful for our country and our state and our district. It is so powerful. It is a pivotal moment. The campaign is all about you. It's not about me. And I, I keep saying this over and over again. It's not about, per se, the candidate. It's about the idea and the solutions the candidate brings forward to a large extent. And what we're talking about tonight is really some of those things. The reason we would love to have you and I want to work for you is one, and our values work together. I've been a deacon at the Silver Spring Church of Christ since 2000. Um, I, I know that means a lot. I was in the Army at Fort Meade um, for four years on the counterintelligence side, so I've been on you know big government side. I've worked for a Fortune 500 business, whether Marriott, International, Manicare Health Services. Uh, one of my great passions is I love coaching fast-pitch softball with girls. And I think it's just wonderful to watch the girls win and compete. One of the things that we did in our community that meant a lot in terms of every resident was to reduce assessments back to where they need to be by 30%. We saved every homeowner in the community over seven to $800. And it was a powerful step to doing the right thing for everybody. And those are the kind of values that we need to bring to the entire state at this moment in time. The big thing is we need to serve you. We need people in government who will serve the citizens. One of the great things that we've come to understand is this is not a Democrat, Republican, or Independent ideal. It's an American ideal. And right now, in our country, in our state, in this district, it couldn't be a more important time. And you deserve better representation than we've been getting. Right now, it's broken. The big thing in Maryland is that it's broken. The legislature is broken. They, have, they are not working for us. We need, it's all about jobs, jobs, and jobs right now. And you can't say that enough. One of the things that's happening in the state is very simple. We need to restore small business. Small business is taking it on the chin. And one of the reasons we chose this location is in Howard County, 30% of all business, 30% of all business roughly is a woman home. You know, and small business is the economic engine and backbone not only of our country, but, it, but of our communities, of our district, and of our nation. It's, it's huge in what we do. They can pivot, they can create jobs more quickly than ever. And we need economic policies that make it easier for small businesses to grow with less regulation so that they can become the, the economic force that we need them to be to really bring about prosperity for everything. Second thing is in terms of jobs. And jobs are a big portion of what we need to be about in creating jobs. Right now, in this state, we have a 10% unemployment rate. Some have said that it's a 19% at the under underemployment rate as well, nationally and reflected here in our state. That's unacceptable because what it means is that people who want to work part time, who, who used to be able to go work, you know, to add extra income to their families, it's hard to find those jobs. It means that they can't find jobs and they continue to look for those. It's not good. We need to create policies that help businesses and to be able to allow those folks to be able to hire jobs. One of the things we found out. And this is an incredible, devastating fact. With the unemployment rate where it sits today, businesses and small businesses, and we've heard this from business owners, have increased their unemployment insurance by almost 700% in cost. It's, it's an additional cost right now. And if we don't get policies in place to create jobs, those cost burdens continue to grow. The other thing is fiscal efficiency. In our state right now, we are an $8.5 billion structural deficit. It's a devastating economic fact over the next four years. In the last legislative session, nothing was really accomplished in terms of turning that around. Well, one of the things that really is disappointing in that, if you really think about it, when California was $19 billion bankrupt, Arnold Schwarzenegger made the comment, we're broke. When Maryland's $8.5 billion bankrupt over the next four years, nobody put on the alarm bills. It was almost as if they had a sign that said, in case of emergency, break glass, and nobody chose to break the glass. They just kept doing what they were doing. That is not the way to do business. We have to do things that create those jobs. And we have to do things very much so. When you, when you understand the difference between California and our state here, we are nowhere near the size and the scope of the state of California. That is bad for our state. It's bad for our citizens. It's bad for all of our children. 
Because what it does, which brings us to our other point, is education. We must focus on quality of education. As we continue to run jobs out of the state and, and, and companies, and all we have to do is look at North of Grumman, we'll have to look at the Hyundai plant that was lost, and it's interesting when people say, well, it was a regional win. Well, we don't say that when the Redskins win and the Ravens lose. It's, it's just not the way to do business. We have to look at creating jobs right here in this state so that the education of the quality that we have can be preserved. And that's very important. We must get Maryland working again. And so I told somebody this, if you don't believe me where those jobs are going, come with me any night at 5 o'clock. And we can go to I-95, I-83, I-270, I-495 and watch the traffic that's just racing out of the state. And with those, with those cars racing out of the state are tax revenues. The situation in the state is like this. Expenses continue to rise, revenues continue to fall. And that is a tragedy. So that is broken. It will never work. We must change that. We must increase revenues and decrease expenses. And there's without hurting the quality of what we have. And what we need, need to do is we need to start focusing on creating those jobs. And I'm proposing two things. When we get elected to the legislature, we'll, we'll do one thing that is called what I call Silicon Valley 2.0. If you're a tech company, a biotech company, we want you to stay in Maryland. We want you to start your business in Maryland. If you're a startup, what we're proposing is 0% business taxes for the next decade. We want you to stay here, grow here, and prosper here, if you're a biotech or technology company. We want to be the birthplace of the next Google. That is powerful, powerful to this state. It is what has kept a lot of other places afloat when they grow. Second, if you're a small business, or even a business, we want your business taxes, your business taxes, to be one half the average of Pennsylvania, Delaware, West Virginia, Virginia, and District of Columbia. If we do that, we change the whole paradigm. We become a competitive power horse, a powerhouse, a place of choice for jobs and to keep your business in this state. And think about this for a second. Knowing what goes on in the Northeast in terms of tax revenues and how high their taxes are up and down the eastern seaboard, not only would Maryland be competitive within the mid-Atlantic, but all the way up the east coast. That is powerful solutions that we need. We need to unleash the power of entrepreneurship, the power of prosperity, the power of job growth, and bring those revenues back to the state. We must grow the economic pie. We need to do that. And tonight, this is the big thing that we ask you to help us do. It is not, it is not, it's not an easy task, but we ask you to help us fire Jim Roby. Jim Roby is somebody who has a record. And he is somebody who, who has record unemployment, record tax increases, record job losses, and record unemployment. He, is, he has his hands all over the Maryland economy. As the deputy majority leader on the budget and finance side at the legislature, he owns it. He broke it. He's responsible and he needs to be held accountable. And we need to work to fire Jim Roby tonight. That's what we need to do. Every going out of business side is a banner of failure of Jim Roby. When you see it in District 13, when you drive to 175 and you see those going out of business signs, there's a reason businesses have left. There's a reason businesses are failing in this state. It's unacceptable. They need to be held accountable. One of the things we have to understand is citizens are no longer an ATM machine. When government messes up and government doesn't pay the bills properly and deal with our money in the stewardship and the accountable fashion that they should, they shouldn't come to tap us. One very simple thing my grandfather always said, which is a very powerful thing, was if, if you, it's always easier to spend other people's money. And it's a fact. It's okay to spend other people's money, but it's awfully difficult to save, invest, and create wealth. And one of the great things I've often said when I was a paper boy as a kid is no poor person ever bought a newspaper for me. It was people who had jobs. And that's the power of really understanding of accountability and who Jim Roby is. Jim Roby need, needs to be fired, and I need your help to do it. It's not, this is a game of very important business we're in. It is not a game, it's with people's lives and where we stand today. It is, what, what has happened over the last years, few years with Jim Roby has been irresponsible, financially risky, and it is just, a, it's reckless in terms of our money. And we need to start holding our, our elected officials accountable fully in terms of what we have to do. So we ask you to help us do that tonight. And we ask you, 
don't yell at the TV anymore at night. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be frustrated. We ask you to turn that frustration inward to our campaign and make a difference. Thank you.